Hey, and welcome to Magnolia 5.7 release highlights. 5.7 is a new major version with many library upgrades, including Java 9 and 10 runtime support, and features to support GDPR regulations. In this video, we only cover a few key improvements, but please check the release notes for the full scoop. 5.7 helps you provide data privacy to your visitors, and it helps you implement the legal mandates, such as GDPR. It's a big topic, so I'll just give a quick overview to two of the features, cookie consent and form templates. So cookies affected by GDPR regulations are only created if your visitor gives consent. So in our demo project, the travel demo, we have now a cookie consent form. And um, if I move about the website, this consent form will keep coming up, but I don't get any uh, marketing type cookies like analytics cookies because I haven't consented to the form. So now let's go ahead and consent to it. And now right away, a new cookie has been stored. And this is just the cookie that stores that I've given consent. So in the demo case, it's very simple. There's just the one button. Uh, we just store the value dismiss. So now when I browse to pages in the website, suddenly I'm going to be getting all the other marketing and analytics related cookies that I've agreed to. These are from Google Analytics. So let's just take a look at how that's set up. Going into Magnolia. In the tools, I have a new app, which is the cookies app. And this is where developers or maybe marketers would configure all of the cookies that um, a visitor might consent to, that you want to control whether a visitor gets them or not based on their consent. So for example, here's the Google Analytics cookie. There's a number of fields. The most important one is this consent required. And this is a regular expression that is compared against the consent cookie that the user has. And um, in this case, this is the default. If consent has been provided for anything, then this cookie will be supplied. But if we check the documentation, there is an example of a more sophisticated case. A form could ask for permissions to a number of levels of cookies. And then each cookie could supply a regular expression that would check if marketing consent had been supplied or statistics consent had been applied. Developers can use the data privacy APIs to add cookies and they can be sure that the cookie adding will respect um, the configurations here and the consent that the visitor has given. But one of the main ways that privacy related cookies are added to our website is through marketing tags like the Google Analytics. So we have that mechanism provided out of the box on marketing tags as well as the actual script itself that gets added to your website. There's a new tab, which is cookies. And here is where you configure which cookies need to be consented to in order for this marketing tag to be added to the website. So now marketing tags are only added to websites for the visitors that have agreed to those cookies. So now let's take a look at the forms provided for the privacy scenarios. Um, the contact page now provides a double opt-in form and a confirmation page provides many other forms for key GDPR scenarios. So let's just take a look at that form quick. So this is the GDPR based contact form and it includes the regular email tab, but also provides the opt-in email. So this is what's going to be sent to the user to confirm that they really are giving permission to the website to store their information. So let's go ahead and go to the contact form and I want to fill it out. I can submit it. And now it basically is going to ask me to confirm that I really uh, am willing to allow my email address to be stored by the website. So I send that. Thanks me. And now if I check my email, okay, I've received a message and here's where that template is used and it's giving me a link to confirm basically for the double opt-in. 
and now I can confirm the consent. Proceed. Thank you. So now I've completed the double opt-in process. In Magnolia, this means that in another new app, the Visitors app, we now see that they have an entry for me which shows which consent I've given, the email address, and this record in the Visitors app is going to be the anchor point within Magnolia to satisfy the other regulations of GDPR, such as the right to be forgotten or the ability to download all of my information from the system. Just quickly going back to this page, this is sort of um, a collection of all of the uh, scenarios that you might want to implement uh, with GDPR and we have sample forms for deleting personal data, for the right to be forgotten, and for getting the report of all of my personal data, allowing you to quickly comply with some of the more complicated requirements of GDPR. Next, I'd like to highlight a new developer feature called Fields by Name. And this lets developers create templates and apps faster because it's now much easier to specify the fields in a form. So the one cumbersome thing of defining a form is that you always needed to supply the full class path for a field. And to do that, of course, you'd usually have to refer back to documentation or copy and paste from your other templates. But with 5.7, it's much easier because you only need to supply the name of the field. And we've also standardized the names of the fields to be whatever's in front of field definition. So I can still use class, but I can also use field type text. That's it. Let's go ahead and update the whole dialog definition. And um, this is the carousel from the travel demo. So I'll just uh, make a new one in the new format. So why don't we just replace all of them? Because it's pretty easy. So we just want field type text, replace all. And let's go ahead and replace all the checkboxes. That is very satisfying to get rid of all of those class paths. Let's just do a side-by-side -side comparison. So here's what the form definitions used to look like. And here's what they look like now with fields by name. And uh, like I said, we use this new naming convention uh, that you just use whatever is in front of field definition. But if you want to just really look at all of the available field names, you can, of course, use the uh, definitions app where they're all defined. So we can just jump to the definitions app. We just want to see the field types. We could look at them from all modules, but most of the um, useful ones are in the UI framework. And there we can see you just use the name of the field to reference it. OK, that's all the demonstration I wanted to show you. The last points are basically that we do now run on Java 9 and Java 10. And uh, we run on Tomcat 9. And Tomcat 9 is now standard in our bundles. And because it's a new major version, 5.7, we've updated many of our other libraries so that you get the latest features. Um, by popular demand, we've updated to FreeMarker 2.3.28, which has some nice new features, Vadian 8.4, Groovy 2.5, and many more. So those are the three highlights from the new release. Please try the release and upgrade your sites, especially since the release fixes a security vulnerability. And note that this security fix will very soon be available on the 5.6, 5.5, and 5.4 branches. If you have any questions or comments on any of the improvements, just comment on the release notes, and you can just Google Magnolia 5.7. And a last note, uh, we will be doing a webinar on the new GDPR features, so you'll get a much more in-depth look at them there. Thanks for your attention.